Hey guys, today I'm back in Besiege and I wanna try beating the entire campaign without using my keyboard at all. Now this might not sound challenging, but building and controlling my machines with only my mouse will definitely present some unique challenges. So let's get right into it. So loading up into the first level here, you can see what I'm doing is building up a pretty simple car. Now this design is actually similar to something I did in my four pieces challenge, but the way I'm controlling it here is by setting the wheels to automatically run. Now this is great, but I still need a way to start the level. And the normal way to do that is using spacebar. Now, Unfortunately, there is a button on the top left that I've like literally never noticed before, but I am able to start the level that way. You can see pretty easily here, I'm able to destroy the house and beat the level. Now, level two is already posing some problems because I can't just use the same car because it's up a little bit too high. Now, I tried extending it out a bit more, but getting it to balance right was definitely a challenge, and I knew I need to try something else out here. Now, I started out again using some wheels for a base, but I didn't want it to move this time. You see, I'm putting in a cannon, and my goal is to shoot the windmill. Unfortunately, Unfortunately though, cannons can't automatically shoot and I need something to trigger it, and I tried using a flamethrower for that. This isn't perfect either though, because flamethrowers can't automatically run, and while I could have used a torch here, I also realized a bomb would work out really well. The bomb should automatically fire off the cannon, and it also might throw some stuff at the windmill as well, so it seemed like a good move. Now at first, the cannonballs were shooting a little bit low, and eventually I kinda got lucky, and the windmill just disintegrated, and with that, I beat the level. Now next up's Old Howl Battlefield, and this one's definitely a little bit harder. The goal is to get the starting block all the way to the insignia, and in order to do that, I was going to start out using a simple car. Now, this level actually encouraged me to change up the rules a little bit for the second island, but for now, I'm going to allow me to use the mouse during testing the level. So that means that I can basically just set the right side of the car to get controlled by right click, the left side by left click, and pretty easily here I get a fully functioning car, and I can get all the way to the end. Now, still playing off the old rules here, and that made this level pretty easy. All I had to do was basically add two bombs to my design that could drive all the way around to the other side, and after that, pretty easily here managed to destroy the two houses and beat that level. Now my first challenge here is the Queen's Fodder, and it's just because there's so many guys to get. I tried out at first just using my bomb car, and I actually got pretty far on this, I was most of the way done, but there's still so many guys left, and my next thought was to extend out the base of the car, and after I did that, you'll also notice I'm adding some bombs to the sides. As the enemies get attracted to my car, they should run into these and try to hit them, and that should take out a really good number of them. Now for good measure, I also added on some bombs to my car as well, and after that, you can see here, driving up to the guys up front, I probably didn't even need to drive on this level, and after that, all the guys started coming up, and after enough bombs exploded and enough fire spread, you can see here, beat the level. Now the last level on the island, you pretty much just need to explode a bunch of stuff, and rockets work really well for this. Now I wanted to take the time while I do this to also explain how I'm changing the rules for the next island. I thought it was a little bit too easy that I can control everything using my mouse while the level is playing, so for the next island, I'm going to be getting rid of that, and now everything needs to be fully automated. So starting out on this first level here, I want to do some rockets, but it's actually a little bit tricky to have the rockets automatically go since I would need to click to set them off. So instead, I wanted to use a cannon. Now the advantage of doing this is that the cannon automatically triggers on C, and it just so happens that logic blocks automatically default to C. This means that if I set the logic block to a not gate, it'll automatically turn on, and that'll automatically fire the cannon. Now the cannonball here was going a little bit short, but it was pretty close to where I needed. So I tried I tried raising up a little bit more, and after that, you can see it's still close, but it's still a little bit low. And at this point, it occurred to me I'm probably gonna need to angle it up a little bit. But even this is not exactly trivial. The thing is, if I want to rotate the cannons, I can only do it in 45 degree increments because that's what it defaults to. I can't type anything else in. But what I can do is rotate it slightly in each dimension, and this will accrue a very slight angle in different directions. Now you can see here, I ended up accruing one slightly up, and that should mean that I'm able to shoot a little bit up. And you can see now, pretty easily able to destroy that right tower, and you can see I ended up getting both of those guys, and now I just have everyone else to deal with. Now my first thought was to build up another car, but of course I can only have it automatically run. This makes it a lot less useful since I can't have it get all of the guys consistently. But I wanted to try it out here, and you can see I have a saw blade on the front, and this should get all of the guys it touches. But you'll notice it just runs into the fence, and then goes away. This was sort of what I was worried about, and I tried adding more of these in, but this was still really inconsistent, and I realized just adding in more cannons here was definitely the play. The cannon, since I can pretty much have infinitely many of them, I can have a pretty unbelievable amount of damage. Now, it still took a few tries since I do need to snipe the guys in the towers, but after not too long, you can see, beat the level here. Now, for the next level, this one has a bunch of birds, and get this, I can't really just use cannons. You really have to get each of the birds individually, and in order to do that, I built up a flying machine here, and my goal was to very slowly pull it into the birds. Now, all it really takes to kill the birds is for them to collide with your machine, so if I just have 
have a really slow machine get in front of them. Eventually, I'll hit enough of them and that'll beat the level. And you can see it really is slow. But after not too long here, I did get enough of the birds and that beat the level. Now, looking up into the Duke's prototypes next, this one is also kind of difficult. There's a lot of animals here with bombs on them. And the thing is, if you get near them, there's a really good chance they're going to chase you. And pretty much if they hit you, it's just over. So I tried using a bunch of cannons to blow them up first. But since there's so many, consistently getting all of them is really unlikely. So you can see here, I got three of them kind of working out. And you can see I started building up a car. Now you can see I go through that first insignia and I do get some progress for that. But I still have two more to get through. And in order to get through those, I ended up rotating my car and putting cannons on it. This seems slightly counterintuitive, but the idea is to shoot my car over to the left. And after that, I can have it drive forward through all of the insignias. Now, at first, things didn't work out so well. And you can see I ended up flopping over to the side. And there really was no solution to that. It just took a lot of tries. And eventually here, you can see I got an okay attempt. I went through two of them, but I was nowhere near the third before I got stopped. After a lot more tries, I got through two more insignias, but I missed the first one, which meant that I was no chance I was going to be beating the level. So I decided to save this one for later and try out the Grand Crystal next. Now, the goal of this level is to get the crystal over to the insignia, and you might wonder how I'm going to get that crystal down. Now, in order to do that, I put down a rope on a ballast, and I pinned the starting block in place. This might seem weird, but the idea is to use a cannon to shoot the ballast with a grabber on it, grab onto the crystal, and pull it back to the start. I figured once I had it down on the ground right near the start, I'd at least be able to figure something out. And to get it to automatically pull back in place, I'm using a timer. This, after a certain amount of time, will start to pull in the rope, and I did set my mouse click to be the trigger for this, and that means I've already taken down one of the five available buttons I have. But after not too long, I did grab onto the crystal, and I got really lucky, because it pulled over to the right side, and that allowed it to go right into the insignia, and without much trouble, I beat the level. Now, this farmer level is up next, and this one's only hard because of the amount of crops you need to take down. You can see here, I built up a car with some saw blades on it, and I'm cutting down crops as I go through, but I'm gonna need to do a lot better than this, because you need to cut down almost all of the crops. So I started out by simplifying my car greatly, and you see I'm actually using the saw blades for wheels. This allows me to stack the cars really close together, and after I put a lot of these in place, I actually wanted to stack even more of these. Now, I did expect most of these cars to go off to the side, but if at least enough of them go through the crops, I should be able to beat the level. And you can see here, this very tiny piece of a car managed to survive and hit the last three crops, and that beat the level. Now, next up here is the big sword level, and to beat this one, I started out using my flying machine again, but I realized it was going to need to be a little fancier than that. Now, as a side note, if you're wondering how I was deleting things, I can't use my delete key, of course, but what I can do is use the trash button. Now, it gives a prompt that I'm supposed to clear the entire machine, but if I select only one thing, it only destroys the one thing I selected, so a little bizarre there, but it does work, and it allows me to actually progress. So I added on two grabbers, and on the grabbers, I added on two rockets. These rockets should pull me up and hopefully get the sword out. And I also added on a timer block, and this is to automatically fire off the rockets to get it out. Now to get a better grip on it, I also added in one grabber to the front, and you can see here, latched onto the sword, started to pull up, and it actually did seem to ignite right, but that was about it. I was not really pulling it up at all, so I increased the strength of the rocket, and I also used some weights to slightly angle me back, and this was really close, but the rockets just didn't fire long enough. Now fortunately, that actually is something I can change, so you can see after I did that, I actually got it out of the ground, and now I just need to get it over to the insignia. Now my plan for that was just to use a couple of these propellers, and I was gonna have them on a timer block, so after it pulls out of the ground, only then does it start pulling forward. And it was a little glitchy for some reason, but it did seem to come out of the ground, and after not too much work, I started to pull it in the direction I wanted. Now, it was definitely kind of luck, because this is my first try, and I barely managed to get the insignia, but I did get it there, and that beats the level. Now, next up is one of my favorite levels here, and for this one, you need to destroy the crystal in the middle, but in order to expose it, you need both pressure plates to go off. So it started out here by putting in a cannon, and I rotated it around until eventually I got it somewhere where I wanted, and I tried to shoot it right on the pressure plate. But you'll notice it's rolling off, and in order to fix that, I added a wooden block to the cannon, and this allows it to stop right on the pressure plate. So that's seemingly working, I added on a second one as well for the other pressure plate, and after a few tries, they both managed to land where they were supposed to, and I started to work my way over to the crystal. Now, I've never been in this situation before, but I was actually going too slow to destroy it here, so I had to try it again, but I increased the flying speed. Now, this time you can see when I hit it, I destroyed it, and that beats the level. Now, after that is the second big crystal level, and for this one, I was gonna go with a pretty similar solution, but it's actually a little harder this time. This crystal is so low gravity that the chances of it moving over to the right are really low, and to get it over there, I'm gonna need to do it myself. Now my plan for that was just to use some cannons, and after it pulls 
all the way in, the cannons are gonna shoot, and it should push it all the way over to the insignia. So after I got the cannon in, I put in a timer block here, and I just started spamming cannons. I wasn't really sure how many I was gonna need, but I figured I might as well go for a lot here, because, well, why not? And you can see after it pulls in here, ends up letting go, and it pushes it over, and I just hit the insignia, but I do get it, and that beats the level. And of course, once again here, beating the last level, and with this, I'm moving on to the third island. Now the last two islands here are where things get way harder, because the solutions really have to be purpose built. Except for this one, I could just load up my cannon design and that beats the level pretty easily. But all of the other ones tend to be hard, including this one. Now I have to destroy a lot in the mine here to expose some gold, and I have to get three gold pieces over to the insignia. This presents some problems though, because the gold sort of randomly falls, so getting a machine to automatically move it is not going to be easy. Now I decided to save this level for later, and I wanted to try the next one instead. This one is the cube level, and this plays pretty similarly to crystal levels, but getting the grabber to actually hit the cube is not exactly easy. The low gravity of the cube makes it fly in a somewhat weird way, but I was able to get it eventually and start pulling it in. Now, as I was pulling it in, I was sort of realizing I'm not exactly sure what I'm trying to do here, because I still need to get the cube over to the insignia, and it's kind of a ways away. Now, I liked my start to that level, but I wanted to hold off on that one to see if I could do anything better. Now, this next level here is actually a pretty good one, because you need to get the king out from under the skull and over to the insignia. And I started out with a pretty simple car design, and it didn't seem to be that great, but I figured if I use some cannons to destroy all of the obstacles first, I might be in better shape. So I put a bunch of those down here, and after that, you can see I'm shooting out the skull, and I do destroy quite a few things in the way. Now, I was messing with this for a while, and you'll actually notice I had my grabber design from before. I figured that this shot in a pretty straight way, and it might actually be one of the more consistent ways to get the king. And it didn't take too long for me to tune it to get right in the skull, and it took a lot of luck, but eventually I did manage to get the king, and I started to pull him back. Now, this first attempt here is actually pretty close to getting the insignia, but I did pull it all the way back, I figured I'd probably need a better way than just luck to get it over there. So I started out using some cannons, and these were hopefully to shoot the king over to the insignia. Now, I didn't like it at first, because the cannon angle was bad, and it was actually kind of impossible for me to move it where I wanted to, so I decided to try again, but this time with a car. Now, the advantage of a car is that I could just drive it in a straight line, and I could pretty easily tune how it turns. And you can see on this dry test here, I got all the way over to the insignia, and that should do the trick. Now, it took an unbelievable amount of tries, but I got the king once again, and it latched onto the grabbers. The problem, though, is he started hitting the wheel, and that deflected the car just enough to not hit the insignia. Now, a few more tries later, I had the car accidentally grab onto the ballast, and that didn't really work. But eventually here, I grabbed the king, I started to pull him in, I got him to fall right on the grabbers of the car, this time he wasn't hitting any of the wheels, and <laughs> I finally got to beat the level. Now, revolving monolith is always kind of a hard one, and you need to ignite the two pillars in the front, and also rotate the monolith around. So I started out, I built up a pretty simple hot air balloon thing, and you can see that ignites the torch. Now, I wanted to do the same thing for the other torch, and you can see here, I ended up putting that in place, but I did have a small problem. As it started out, it would ignite the other one, and then cause it to break. With a little bit of staging, I managed to pull it back a bit and get everything to work, and this one, just before it ran out of fuel, finally ignited that torch, and that ignited both of the pillars. Now, there was still a long way to go here, because I needed to rotate all three sections of the monolith, and I wanted to start out with the car for the bottom one, because that just seemed to be the easiest way to go. Now, in the first attempt here, I missed the monolith, and it seemed like the unsteady ground was going to be a little annoying, but I did manage to hit it, and I started to rotate it around. Now, next up, I actually wanted to work on the top layer, and in order to do that, I'm using a hot air balloon again, and a grabber. I figured I should be able to use this to push right into this, and start to rotate it around, and you see it latches onto it, and once the torch ignites everything, it starts to rotate, and that should actually work. Now, I got rid of my car, and I replaced it with a hot air balloon, and that was because the randomness of the car was starting to get to me, and the hot air balloon seemed to be really consistent. Now, I tried to beat the level here using only these two balloons, but unfortunately, that middle piece wasn't aligned quite right, and that was preventing me from beating the level. So I had to add in a middle hot air balloon here, and after a little bit of tuning, it actually wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. They all started to rotate around, and you can see all the ignited pieces are lining up in the middle, and that ends up beating it. And as per usual, the last level in the island is always just a destroy level, so that was beat pretty easily. And now I just had the final island, which was definitely the hardest one. Now, the first level of this island is not very easy, and I started out with a few different designs using a flying machine in a car, but I need to drag this key over to the hole, but it's such a precise action, I couldn't really figure out a way to automate it, so I wanted to hold off on this and work on the next level here. This level, though, is actually really similar, because I need to get the mirror over to our really precise location to shine the light right into the pot. Now, I started building up a car, and I also did some more flying machine stuff, but getting this to be precisely done was almost impossible, and I 
also decided to skip over this for now. But I wanted to try this tree level, and at first, things were looking okay. I just need to destroy enough of the fruit on here, and I was gonna add in a bunch of cannons to do this, but I figured if I just stacked enough of these cannons, eventually they just explode out, and that causes them to just hit the fruit and beat the level. Now after that is this relic level, and in order to beat this, I need to get these two hexagonal relic pieces into their holes. Now I started out by focusing on the left one, and to beat that, you can see here, I made a pretty simple car. I'm adding in a couple of pistons, I added in a grabber, and I also added in a steering hinge. What this is gonna allow me to do is push down to grab the relic, rotate it up with the steering hinge, and hopefully drive it forward into its hole. Now one problem with this, I'm actually starting to run into the maximum assignable keys I have. The thing is, I have left click and right click, which I'm using to drive the car. I have middle click, which I use to rotate up the relic, and then I have scroll up and scroll down. And I'm using one of these to extend out the pistons, and with only one extra control left, I'm gonna have to recycle a lot to make sure to get the other side working. Now you can see in this test, I got close to putting it in the hole, but it was a little high, and that's actually why I decided to add another timer in. And you'll notice the pistons are moving up and down a lot. I was hoping this action was gonna guide it right in the hole, and after not too long, see here, it pushed itself in there, and that's one of the two done. Now for the other relic, I wanted to do something really similar, and actually just copy over the car. Now it can't be a straight copy, because of course it's going in a different direction, and also I'm gonna need it to rotate once it gets over to the relic. But I should be able to reuse most of the controls here, but I also added in one extra thing. You can see the wheel I'm putting on top of the robot here, and after I add in two ballasts, the plan is for it to spin, and you can see it slowly rotates me to the side. This should work out really well, and if I stack on another ballast here, it should give me even more speed, and that seemed to work out well. Now there are a few extra additions here, such as more weight in the back to prevent it from tipping, but eventually I actually got this side in. Now the other side went in as well, but only after I clicked on the window and dragged it a tiny bit. I'm not sure if I actually interfered with that, or if it just happened to be a coincidence, but either way, I beat the final level here, and all I had left to do is a few levels here I left behind. Now I really like Frost, of course, I can't really beat with a lot of cannons, so I went back to my grabber idea, and I wanted to pull it back in. Now of course, it took a few tries again here, but I did end up getting it, and once I pulled it in, I got the idea to do something pretty similar to that Consumed King level. After I get it over to the start, I'm gonna have a car drive it over to the finish, and I figured that should work out. But once I got it in place, you'll notice as soon as the cube hits it, it sort of disintegrated. Now I knew that was gonna happen, because after it gets frozen, it gets really brittle, but I was hoping if it hit these grabbers, it wouldn't do that. Unfortunately though, that didn't seem to change anything, and it still disintegrated. So to fix that, I just replaced everything with ballast, which I guess I should have done before, and after I got those all replaced here, I also braced it up a little bit, I added in some water cannons. These are necessary since the cube creates zero gravity around it, so they're gonna push me into the ground, and that should allow me to get some traction. Now, in my first attempt here, I accidentally grabbed the ballast instead of the cube, and that didn't work out, so I had to move some stuff around and also change some timings, but you can see here, I let go of it, and I started to move forward. Now, this was all automatically happening, and that was really good here, but you'll notice I'm kind of off the line to get to the insignia. Now, I figured this would be the first test, and that I figured out later, but it happened to just spin itself around perfectly, and I got right on the insignia and beat the level. That probably saved me about 45 minutes of tuning, which was pretty good, and I went back to this level with the key. And I had to get it in this hole, and I spent hours trying to automate this in different ways, but no matter what, picking up the key wasn't so bad, but getting it anywhere near the hole was nearly impossible. Now, I decided to try to beat this level while controlling it using my mouse, but this still wasn't going to make it easy. Now, I decided to make left and right, left and right click, and I also decided to make up and down, scroll up and scroll down, and to go forward, it's a middle mouse click. These are all of the buttons I have, and you'll notice here I got near the key, but I'm really zoomed in because I'm trying to go up, but it just wasn't really working. So to hopefully improve things, I actually changed rise and fall to also be left and right click, so I have to spin in order to get myself up and down. This sounds really bad, and I mean it is, but it actually was kind of working. See, I got it guided into the hole there, and I only messed up a little bit to get it out. Now, it took me a long time to get it near the hole again, but eventually I did get it there, and after not too much trying, I ended up releasing it, and that beat that level. Now, I was curious if I could also beat the mirror level in a really similar way here, so I got over to the mirror, I tried grabbing onto it, but the thing is, the controls on this are so bad that it was really hard to get it into the position, and it would often just do that. But this level I didn't really need a flying machine for, and I figured a car could work out a lot better. So you'll see after I got those wheels put on, I put two steering hitches in the front. Now, as I grab onto the mirror here, notice I try to pull them in and rotate it around. It's a little bit too heavy though, and I actually started to rotate my car around. So I added on some ballast to the back for extra weight, and now you can see I get a good angle on this. And with not too much trouble, I'm able to back this up and try to reflect it into the pot. Now my angle was a little bit off on this first attempt here, but it didn't take too long for me to try this again 
again, and I got it right where I needed it, and you can see here, beat the level. Now, there's only two levels left here, and one of them is this gold level. Now, I'm actually using the same flying machine I used for the key level, and while it's kind of awful, I was able to guide it where I needed, and you can see here, I'm able to get things over to the goal. Now, I know some people are probably wondering why I didn't just rebind the camera controls, and the reason is you can't. They're actually just stuck in place, and that's why I was struggling so much here. But after not too long, I managed to grab onto three gold pieces, and after only a little bit of camera troubles, I got them over to the goal. And I'm gonna let the final level here that I couldn't solve play while I'll do my outro. So guys, thanks for watching. These sorts of challenges are really fun, and I was actually surprised how easy this was at first without forcing the automation rule. With it though, I thought the challenge was a really good difficulty, and I was glad I got most of the levels done with the improved rule set. So if you have any more ideas for challenges, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions or comments, also feel free to leave that down below. And otherwise, till next time.